Okay, let's check the audio again. How is that? Better now, yeah? Thank you very much. What I said earlier uh, was that uh, as you are joining this broadcast, eh, share the broadcast with your friends, copy the link, post it on your Twitter. I mean, it's on your Twitter, on your WhatsApp, Facebook, everywhere. Tell them, my good today. <laughs> I Thank you so much for joining me from wherever you are watching from prison break in Kogi and Abdullahi Adamu, the former Zamfara state governor, now a senator, has just come out again to say, forget it. Zoning is unconstitutional and forget it. We are not zoning anything to southern Nigeria. We will slug it out. Forget it. <laughs> Sit at home is biting hard in the east. A very big one that uh, even the governors are beginning to come out to mobilize their party members to show that uh, people are, you know, uh, disobeying the sit at home. I want to talk about that tonight. Remember, share the broadcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. My yes. Let's do this. Good evening to you, good morning to you, good afternoon to you from wherever you're watching from. And this is Mayegun Live. You have been following the news, I believe. And you have also read that uh, 24 hours after the news broke uh, from Zamfara, the same Zamfara that uh, they told us then, sorry, Abdullahi was actually a Nasarawa governor, not even Zamfara. Now, the news from Zamfara was that uh, they shut down the internet to fight terrorists. Then they unleashed the BMC, the Bokwari Media Center, the trolls. They unleashed them on the internet, including the chief troll, Femi Fonny Coyote the spokesperson for Yeye Bilu. They were bragging until 24 hours ago when the news came that these guys were not actually fighting any terrorists. In fact, the terrorists are everywhere to the point that uh, they were able to take over a base, military base, where the logistics, where they are keeping the military logistics, hardware and every other thing like weapons and others to fight banditry. So the bandits attacked the place, killed 12 uh, officers, including seven naval, I mean, naval officers. I mean, officers. I'm like, naval officers uh, fighting in the desert. Well, I don't know. 
So that uh, bust that the the bubble of they are fighting terrorists. That is why they shut down the internet. Twenty four hours after that, as you are watching this video, the same bandits they have attacked the federal prison in Kogi State. Kogi Lokoja Highway, the federal prison there, they attack it and then they freed over 200 inmates, including dangerous uh, criminals, they released them. Now, people in Abuja are worried. That is also the new the scale of the insecurity in Nigeria, aiding and abetting terrorists, releasing terrorists, call them repentant terrorists. Those who brought us to this level, who have, uh, you know, who have uh, uh, put in the, 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 the wedge in between all the nationalities in Nigeria, that we are pretty much at the precipice of uh, breaking up from Nigeria. The people that brought us to this level are now telling us that we should forget it. They will keep the power as long as they want. And if we don't believe in that, then let democracy do the work. Since they have the number, they have the size, the country is uh, in a way, you know, designed to serve them. Then let democracy judge. So they want to hold on to the resources of the South. Why they wield the power? to mismanage their resources, including to commit genocide that they are committing as we speak. Bandits attacked Kogi, freed prison, I mean prisoners. Modus operandi. There's something they always call the emu. Emu, emu. I usually hear that in the movies, right? Emu. Modus of oppression. That's what I, that's the meaning I gave to it. So if you look at uh, how the Boko Haram terrorist operates everywhere that they have operated they are victims the survivors their stories if you pair their stories with that of the bandits that they wanted to believe are bandits they are not terrorists and then you pair that to the fulani terrorists that they also want to tell you that uh, they are just fulani as men but they are not terrorists when you pair that again to the uh, operations of the unknown gunmen and you will see the similarity in everything. I will explain. Boko Haram came. They said they had to take over Nigeria and make Nigeria a caliphate. That was their pure agenda, which simply means it is 100% religious. And they have been killing since then. That was before Boko Hari came in. Immediately Boko Hari came in. The Boko Haram of 20, I mean 2014 metamorphosed into ISWAP and the rest of all the terrorist groups you have today in northern Nigeria. According to what uh, the data we have, they say you are dealing with uh, over 10,000 armed terrorists in northern Nigeria as we speak today. 100% of them are for land grabbing, enforcement of uh, their religious uh, belief, Islamization, caliphate, and all of that. Same thing, the same agenda. But despite the, how deadly they are, do you know that they are not classed as terrorists in Nigeria? Just to keep them protected. Because those who are the sponsor, those who are their backers, especially those in government, right? Knows the danger of classifying them as terrorists, despite the danger they have, uh, they've carried out. But that same people conveniently agreed with Igbo governors Igbo politicians, Igbo elites to declare IPOB a terrorist organization that has now set, the, set every Igbo, 
young and old, set them up. Make them an easy prey for the dangerous uh, Nigerian security forces. Just as simple as that. That is why whenever the police or whenever you try or fight to rebuff any of these Fulani terrorists anywhere, and you ended up having to catch or, I mean, you know, to catch any of them, the police will treat them as just normal criminals, not as terrorists, even if they see them with guns, because that is the order. The same police, the same military will run mad like somebody with a serious mental problem whenever he sees anyone wearing anything with insignia of IPOB and everybody exists in that same society. Just like a switch. Hmm? Another person can come tomorrow and switch that, but the damages will be long done. Now, the damages they have done was for the Igbo politicians to agree and set uh, the Biafrans up, thinking that to protect uh, their own political base, which they never have anyway. The government that is protecting terrorists, the terrorists that are capable of shutting down the military jets, capable of killing the Nigerian military, Nigerian soldiers, uh, Nigerian security forces, like just like it's nothing. The terrorists that are capable of holding government and people so to ransom to the point that uh, it became the state policy to pay ransom to terrorists and offer them amnesty. Those guys are not seen as anything dangerous than one allowing the Biafrans to congregate and discuss Biafra in peace. Two, allowing the power to shift from their hands when this project they have embarked upon is, according to them, almost completed, despite all the challenges they have faced. Whether PDP, whether APC, the agenda is the same. We must protect these terrorists and continue to service this, uh, you know, unserviceable entity called Nigeria without the resources of the Southern Nigeria. So when somebody came out and he said, there is nothing like a rotation. Let me, let me tell you something. When these guys were so crazy, so mad, in 2014 so mad at everything in Nigeria, everything in nigeria they used one thing in particular security they created the insecurity and it was time to take advantage of it but it won't sell if it was just about security, if it was not laced with tribal and religious bigotry. One, they agreed that the killing of the Northerners, I mean, killing in the Northern Nigeria by Boko Haram then was primarily being sponsored by uh, Good Luck Jonathan. Number two, Many of them agreed that power must return to the northern Nigeria because uh, Yaradua didn't finish his own tenor. All this coupled with, uh, with, with underlying uh, religious and ethnic uh, bigotry, I call it, that was so obvious then, they were able to take the power back because they felt like they were cheated for not completing their own eight years. Now, when the opportunity came to try and see if they could trust the South with power, when Bokwari became a vegetable in 2016 and it was flown abroad, Oshibajo was made the acting president, right? And his action for those 100 days was completely a red flag 
for them. And now one of them just came out that you might be jumping up for 2023. Number one, APC has nothing like zoning. Number two, you can never expect us to just say, okay, yeah, oh yeah, give us somebody from the South, we'll vote for him or her. That is also a red flag to those of you who are gang, I mean, I mean, you know, teaming up to help them continue to gaslight IPOB members. Continue to gaslight the uh, Yoruba Nation campaigners. Continue to gaslight everyone that is asking that uh, this rigged system, if it's not destroyed, it will destroy you all. Right? 2023, which is pretty much a mirage in the long run. Setting up your own brothers and sisters, you watched them proscribe IPOB. They called them terrorists. They started killing them. Many, many of you were feeling like they deserved it. They kidnapped Mazin Namdekanu up to this point. None of the Igbo governors, none of them, no, no single one of them has you know, found it kind of uh, morally right to at least pay a visit to Mazin Namdekanu there and say, I just want to talk to you. What do you think we can do? How do you think we can make things work? I mean, what? And because they had the opportunity, the opportunity they had in Enugu way back in 2017, remember? And when he rejected their offer of him backing down, they agreed with Bokwari to send the soldiers to go and kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow it will be four years that they sent Operation Python Dance to go and kill innocent people, young men and women. They massacred them and they destroyed their properties. They took their bodies away and many families have never even healed from that. Tomorrow, simply because Mahazin Amdekano disagree with the offers of the politicians of Igbo extraction, where Umwambweze, but that old man was there, I think I can bring that picture back to your, to kind of your memory right now. They had him there. They had a meeting. They told him, just back down. We will go and talk to Bokwari. And he told them, no, let Bokwari make, make the announcement of all these concessions. And yes, the Biafran struggle cannot be, you know, cannot be, uh, you know, retired. It will continue. But if they begin to address the injustice, if they begin to address all the assault and start to account for all the killings, when we begin to, you know, we can start the healing from there. They said, no, 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 no. They just want you to call it off for now. He disagreed. A week or two later, the Nigerian soldiers, the Nigerian military, all of them, they moved in to kill him. More than 28 innocent people were murdered that day. It will be four years tomorrow. No Igbo leader, no Igbo politician, no Igbo governor, none of them deem it fit to say, listen, this is happening to us. We cannot continue to feed our children to the dogs. We cannot continue to feed our own brothers to the dogs. We cannot continue to play the good boys to those who care no hoot about how, you know, how our economy, how our, our states are destroyed. But if we stay together, they will know that uh, you know, if you stay together and bond together, number one, you can protect yourselves together. And if Nigeria eventually have to call it off, now it's getting to that stage now where this issue of a VAT war, VAT war, I mean, the VAT war. So everything that attaches uh, the Igbo people to Nigeria, they will begin to see the light and begin to agree with uh, the IPOB and Mazin and the Kanu after all. But what am I saying here? None of them deem it fit to even speak up for any of this until they started the Sitatome. The Sitatome that is now called voluntary. Do not mistake him. Yes, there are people on social media sending messages like, oh, if they born you will come out tomorrow. If they born you will come out tomorrow. Listen. These 
cannot be 100 percent the position of the ipob the ones i know about the sit at home is voluntary and people who are sitting at home are sitting at home because they know why they want to sit at home and the fact that uh, they agree to sit at home doesn't stop others from going to wherever they want to go to and i'm saying this to some of you too do not take this and ruin this for what you have achieved with it you don't need to go after anybody on the road you don't need to uh, to to threaten anybody that they shouldn't do this or do that when you do that it's going to defeat its purpose but i've seen it so far it is these politicians, these politicians. And I keep telling you that uh, if you believe every lie they tell you, if you believe everything they tell you, trust me, I have an airport to sell to you. If you have, uh, if you have the money, I have an airport to sell to you somewhere. Nigerian politicians cannot tell you anything that you can believe. Nigerian media cannot tell you everything that you cannot scrutinize yourself. You see, when they tell you and they do their report and tell you that, uh, oh, unknown gunmen are attacking people here and there for, for not obeying sit at home. I ask you this question. Are the ESL not considered a terrorist organization that the Nigerian soldiers, Nigerian military are looking for? Well, I mean, how come it's so easy that unknown gunmen unknown gunmen will come into the city they will perpetrate the crime do all of that and on for for hours that they commit the crime attacking police stations as they say there will be no response from any military there will be no response for, from any security agents from that state from that particular place until they are long gone then the media will say unknown gunmen kill pol two policemen in Imo, Imo states unknown gunmen burn down police station then I'm like, uh, how does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I have my own uh, theory for that. They are, it's just like saying Boko Haram. They, call, they came uh, in, a, in a van and they came to Abuja or Boko Haram. They came in a van and they came to Shokoto, the capital. And then they attacked police station. And there was no response. There was nothing. No other people could say, oh, that police station has been attacked, though. We don't know who, are attacking, who is attacking the place. So, and there's no response until they are gone. I've never, I mean, it's, it's, it's just as simple as that. It's not what it should be. But when they carry out their own covert operation and attack places to see unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen, then innocent people who are going about their businesses are picked up in order to make it look real. I have told you that many times. You may not have been paying attention. And now I am reading everywhere. You see these uh, Bia Bia France. look at what they are doing. This is at home. This is how they are attacking people. Look, because Bia France are not attacking anybody. They are not. It is your government that is attacking people because that is what will make it look valid that they proscribe them as terrorists how would you believe they are terrorists if they are not doing all of these things that you are seeing everywhere but ask yourselves every time we hear that uh, nigeria military and the boko haram they fought and they killed nigeria military nigeria military killed boko haram but have you ever heard anywhere that nigeria military and esn nigeria military and unknown government have you seen anywhere they fought anywhere in the land before have you I told you about modus, uh, modus of oppression. All of these are what is they are created by the, the bloodthirsty Bokwaris government. It doesn't matter how many numbers of people they want to kill to prove the point. And then the, if I tell you that uh, when they go into police stations and they kill policemen, eh, and they tell you that unknown government killed them, the same media that is telling you that unknown government killed them, the same media is expecting you to believe that if we say unknown government, in Eastern Nigeria, you should be thinking about ESN or IPOB. It is called social conditioning, mental conditioning. But ask yourselves, the people they have paraded as ESN members, as people they arrested as IPOB members, mm -hmm. ask yourselves, how come there was never a time the ESN that has the capacity to break a prison, the ESN that has the capacity to attack a police station without any, uh, you know, any of them uh, getting shot at that police station, the ESN that has the capacity to attack uh, here and there as they are making you believe unknown government did, 
But when it comes to arresting them, there is no gunfight. They just arrest them. Ah, this one is in format of ESN. This one is a uh, gun supplier. This one is the Babalawo of ESN. This one is the Adibia. Now this one, they do juju for them. Now this one, they give them this because it has become a political uh, game for the criminals who set this up. And who are the criminals? The Igbo governors, the Igbo politicians. And that's why I feel sorry for some of you who are still feeling like uh, Yoruba is still your enemy or somebody in Yoruba land is your betrayer. You should look inward. Look inward, deeper. They are the same people because they are your brothers, they are your sisters, they are the people who speak your language. They are the same people who agreed that uh, IPOB must be prescribed as a terrorist organization. Dave Umayi, the Abonyi state governor, was the one who made that announcement. He was the one who said IPOB are now proscribed as a terrorist, or terrorist organization in the entire Igbo land. That's what he said. Malamu just put a stamp on it for them in Abuja to help them hunt down any of them that they want to see, any of the Biafrans they want to see. So the people who said they should prescribe IPOB are the same people who are now pointing at people. That one, you see that one? A husband, a husband, they do big man. And I want to take over a wife. You know what? Make I call these people and tell them, say, this man, now nah, he ESN, now nah, this one, now nah, he ESN financier. They will, they will call them. How about Kiari? We have information for you. One ESN financier is here. Please come and get him before you, before you escape. Oh. Then they will move there. Arrest innocent person, torture them, torture them, chain them to the to the floor, and then parade them as ESN financier, ESN this, uh, IPOB this, ESN that. Ask yourselves, how come we have never witnessed anywhere they will say, oh, there was a serious gun battle because the ESN they posted, the ESN they made you believe is that the Bukwari said they have weapons everywhere. That's why he said mental conditioning. You see why I don't believe? You see why I told you never to ever, ever believe in this unknown government of a thing? Ah, my ego don't talk like that. I have seen some of them, they are speaking Igbo. So who says that uh, you don't have Buari Shuku, you don't have Buari, I mean, uh, Ungo Ziari, uh, Nam Diari, Buari Shuku, and all of them in Igbo land? Eh? Who are those you call Sabo? Are the Sabos in uh, Nenewi? Are they from Yoruba land? The Sabo in Ebony. Are they from uh, Shokoto? The Sabo in uh, Abia, in Unicha, in uh, Oka, in Unewi. Are those Sabos from uh, Shagamu in Ogun State? Of course, you know that they are the people who speak your language. They work with them for a good price. They will sell their brothers for a good price because they know not what they are doing, do they? We watch them to proscribe IPUB as a terrorist organization. The same criminals told you that they were charging Omoyele Shoure for treasonable felony. You know what is treasonable felony? That is for somebody to have the capacity to overthrow a government. And when they said, bring the evidence, they said Shoure transferred money from his New York account to Sahara Reporters New York account. Sahara Reporters that is registered in New York that has uh, no uh, connection or no registration in Nigeria at all. They said he transferred money from his own account to Sahara Reporters uh, account in New York. Therefore, <clears throat> they suspected that that money was a proceed of terrorism. That's number one evidence. Number two evidence, they realized that uh, uh, Shoure traveled to uh, Dubai to go and meet some people. And they discussed how they were going to overthrow Bokwari and they would make Shoure the president. And when they checked Shoure's uh, passport, he's never been to Dubai for like for years. When that didn't fly. And they are keeping Shoure today for the crime of trying to overthrow Bokuwari. When they, when they were dishing out all this nonsense, the Buari idiots, the, the, the Buari dins, Buari didn't, 
Hey, look at him. Oh. He's transferring money. That's, is that not corruption? He's transferring money from his uh, owner. Is that not stealing? He's stealing from Sahara reporters. Mad people. That is treasonable offense. When they picked Mazi Namdekanu, they said, oh, we arrested him because he brought in some equipment into Nigeria to be broadcasting on what is called the I army, mean, called uh, Biafra Radio. So, you know, to make it look like it's a serious offense, they said he brought in sophisticated equipment to be broadcasting. Broadcasting. Radio. Very serious offense. That he has the capacity to go and tell people to give him money to buy weapons. Has he bought any weapon? No, no, he hasn't. But we just thought that uh, he's so dangerous and he has committed a crime. That was what they said. Treasonable felony. They went to Sunday Bo's house in the middle of the night. Killed two innocent people. And when they came out, they said, we went there to carry out an arrest. Where is your arrest warrant? We don't need arrest warrant to, ar to arrest anybody. Do you then have to shoot and kill anything in sight when you want to go and arrest somebody? Oh, we went to his house. We found all these guns. We found all this life ammunition. Oh, we found all these charms. Oh, we found uh, these international passports mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. And because of that, we have declared him wanted. On top waiting, waiting in do. Because he is into gun running. We found guns in his house and we believe that he is into gun running. Really? You found guns in his house and none of those guns were fired or shot. And you shot over 300 rounds of ammunition in the house. Over 300 rounds of, ammun of ammunition in the civilian's house. Anybody that sees him, we must arrest him. Arrest him for what? For nothing. Yes, he must be arrested. Nobody can take that nonsense. That's the Buhari idiot talking. Then, the people that said they were looking for Sunday go for gun running, they are keeping Lady K and Joel. Guess what they are charging them for? They are charging them for terrorism. They are charging people who are asking for Yoruba Nation using their phones to stream live, express themselves, organize and mobilize for rallies peacefully. No fight, no disruption, no nothing. No recorded one ever. Nigeria is charging them for terrorism now. What are they going to say Lady K is capable of? Lady K is what? Remember the lady, that young lady, they arrested in Imo State. Let me see if I can see, uh, see a picture here. I tend to leave that on for some time. Uh, give me a sec. You remember? She's just 21 years old. She's a girl that uh, is looking to sit for this uh, year's jam to gain admission into university. 21-year-old girl. Abba Kiyari kidnapped her and they have kept her not in the police custody, not uh, in the prison, never taken to court, and they kept her as a sex slave in their midst. Guess what? What really makes it uh, really, really heartbreaking? Her parents didn't know where she is until they, until they, I mean, somebody who got released from their detention until that person said that 
Look at this girl that you are de you've declared wanted. She's not missing, no. She's in this place and she, uh, you know, she's there like uh, the cook, like house app for this police for where they lock us up. And when her parents got there, guess what? She walked out of her parents' house. They, they grabbed her on the road. And since then, she's never regained her freedom. Glory Okolie. When Nigeria, when Nigeria, when it became so viral, when our news, uh, you know, became viral, the Nigerian police said they were going to investigate. After they've locked that up for over two months, they said they were going to investigate what happened. Within seven hours of investigation, they came back with a verdict that uh, she's a girlfriend to one of the ESN leaders. She, is, uh, she may look innocent. She is an informant and the gun runner for them. She is the one that is helping them to move weapon everywhere. That is how terrible Nigeria can be. And that is why I said anything they tell you, don't believe them, please. For the sake of your own mental health. Because it will get to a point that you begin to think, am I mad? Is something wrong with me? Is, uh, is, you know what I mean? Don't believe them. Bankiti, thank you so much for your super sticker and your super chat. Let me read that out quickly. I want to take you quickly to Kano after this, uh, where they are opening a never, I mean, a never base in the desert before we go to the next one. Eh? 2023 Mirage. Bankiti, you have the right to keep your super chat money to yourself alone. Please don't share with anybody. Let them go and find their own. Keep up the good work, Baba. <laughs> Thank you very much, by the way. I really wish I could keep every penny of it. It's crazy, guys. When you give a super chat uh, on, uh, on YouTube, I only get 51% of that money. Do you get what I mean? YouTube is going to take 49% of it. But nevertheless, thank you. Okay. So that is why if people uh, give any support to Mayegun and it goes to the PayPal or the Cash App or what have you, that comes straight away to Mayegun to myself. But you see this one, it is just a show of support that uh, really goes a long way as well. So thank you. That's how they work it out. It looks so good out there. Well, they take almost everything almost half of everything 